Okay, Dr. Narendra Singh Verma, and he is going to talk on an easy and complete uh, toric solution. And I have Dr. Suresh Kumar, uh, uh, who's going to be dis uh, discussing. Just wait. Anagha, can you be here? Good morning. Uh, sorry, uh, I have to leave for the national symposium. And uh, I know all each and every judge here came because I had called them. And I'm so deeply pleased. One minute, Dr. Sanjay. Dr. Sanjay, please. I'm very, very thankful to all the judges for coming here for my sake. And I'm deeply obliged to all of you. So please uh, mark uh, the thing. And Anagha will collect it from you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Seniors and respected judges. So, Please I start my presentation, easy talk. So, during cataract surgery, there are two ways to decrease the corneal toracity. Either you have to implant the toric lens or you have to take the incision on the steep axis. So the, the surgical problem is there is error in the marking of the steep axis and marking of the axis of alignment. Presently, there is no solution which is economical, easy, and error-free. I present you innovative surgical solution, EasyTor. So EasyTor has all important features which are required for preoperative workup and intraoperatively to mark the steep axis and axis of alignment of the toric lens. So for preoperative workup, we want topography, Keratometer reading in 3, 5, and 7 millimeter zone. Axial heat map, the nature of astigmatism should be regular. For the toric lens, it has manual image guided system. It is based on the principle of image guided system. So it provides easy and error free marking of axis of alignment. For surgical correction of astigmatism by incision, it has SCA module for easy and error free steep axis marking. It is also having a new feature for the first time. It is having direct access to Barrett or a calculator and Barrett Universal 2 formula. So it is very fast and prevent transcription error. By one click of button, you can get directly the net astigmatism and axis of alignment from Barrett or a calculator directly. Let's see how it works. It is a topographer with many additional features. It provides an easy, efficient and economical alternative to existing solutions. It is an LED-based anterior surface topographer which analyzes 600 data points in a 9mm central corneal zone. A single capture provides us with all the required data which is summarized on a single screen. It provides keratometry in 3, 5 and 7mm zones, axial heat map, white to white, etc. Demonstration of toric lens axis alignment. Left eye keratometry of this patient shows 1.5 diopter astigmatism in 132 degrees in 3mm zone. Press the calculator icon. Net astigmatism will be displayed directly from Barrett Toric Calculator. It is 1.1 diopter in 145 degrees in this case. Enter SIA value which is 0.3 in this case. The axis of alignment will be displayed automatically which is at 147 degrees in this case. Press the pencil icon to enter biometry data. Axial length, ACD and lens thickness. The axis of alignment at 147 degrees is displayed as a green line and site of incision at 136 degrees in the form of a pink highlighted area. Identify two prominent limbal structures. Click on it. The system will display their axis. It is 17 and 50 degrees in this case. Save the picture, rotate it as needed and use it intraoperatively to identify landmark points under microscope. Here I am making two landmark points at 17 and 50 degrees on the patient's eye. Hold the degree gauge and align it with the markings. Now mark the site of incision which is at 136 degrees. After lens implantation and viscoelastic removal, bring the degree gauge again to mark axis of alignment on the limbus at 145 degrees using 17 and 50 degree landmark points as reference. You can also mark the axis of alignment on the cornea. Finally, align the toric lens axis with the corneal markings. SCA marking module can be used for surgical correction of astigmatism using incision as a plan B in patients not suitable for toric lens implantation. Demonstration. Right eye is pseudophagic and post-op residual refractive error is plus 1.5 spherical with minus 3.25 cylinder. Even though the IOL power was perfect, the site of incision was incorrect as it was on flat axis. 
The left eye has cataract with 1.1 diopter cylinder at 175 degree. Press the pencil icon to enter biometry data in Barrett Universal 2 formula. Then click the calculator icon to get IOL power options with residual refractive error. I plan for 5.5 mm main incision at 175 degrees and 2.8 mm OCCI to neutralize the 1.1 diopter astigmatism by using incision. Identify and mark two prominent limbal structures which are at 14 and 168 degree in this case. Interoperatively mark the same points on the limbus using marker. Using these landmark points as reference, I mark the site of incision at 175 degrees on both sides. After lens implantation, a 2.8 mm OCCI was done and the main incision was extended to 5.5 mm. These are post-op day 1 and day 6 pictures. So we developed this stroke after in the last 3 years and uh, it is having some different apps. Very nice presentation. Anybody can comment. Anybody can comment. Yeah. Anybody can comment. So, what were the uh, advantages that you had over, say, Verion or? Can vary. It is on the same. Of course, it the will be cost. Very economical. Yes, it's it cost wise. Yeah. So it will. But be it doesn't have image guidance. Okay. It yeah, has it to be economical. It. Huh? It doesn't have image guidance. You are no, marking. No, that, that is not uh, there. That is there. There. We will also implement that. That will be also possible. And uh, actually, we have. I am writing manual image guidance system. We have to do one manual marking just after putting the toric lens. You see where the landmark structure. You mark the landmark structure. They are the reference point. From there, you can do one manual marking. So it is not totally image guidance system. It is manual image guidance system. So one manual preoperative manual marking is not required which is very problematic for the surgeon and the, for the patient. So preoperative marking are not required. So only there, are, there are two things that I actually failed to understand. One was uh, why do you need a keratometry at 5 millimeters and 7 millimeter so it zones? Is later, it is also because regularity you can find out how much regular cornea so is So that, that yeah, is yeah, topography. You, why, yeah. do, why would you need a keratometry at 5 and 7 millimeters? So it, it, is, it is a keratometer is giving you, we, are, uh, we want only 3 millimeter. But we can find out how much axis is changing. So for uh, this corneal should be regular if you want to put the toric lens or if you want to uh, take the incision on the strip axis, that corneal should be regular. So we can find out just it is provided. And the other is uh, the surgical video that you showed. Uh, what made you say that that patient was unsuitable for toric implant? No, no. If the patient, some patient, they can't afford. Some patients are unsuitable. Then, though, if plan B is also there, if the patient can't so, afford, I can. So the plan B in here was. No, no, not if plan B means uh, it should be that if patient is not uh, suitable means he can't afford or uh, sometimes we are not able to put the lens. We are having not, not having the lens in any condition. And you extended the section to 5.5 clear .5 corneal and 2.8 on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, but I am making the that main tunnel. I am making it longer tunnel, so it is. So it is. is Are it you is, sure it is not going to add on to the astigmatic value if you're making a longer tunnel? But AC, I am putting the air, and it is not on the tropical. I am the tropical, but and I am doing patch for twelve hours. Okay. What would be the SIA for that five point five millimeters? Because the SIA also that, been so changing. That goes up to two. Yes. That will depend on the length of the incision also, sir. Yeah. That, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since you said that you're elongating the section, I don't know how you're doing it post-operatively. But if you are doing it, then it will have additional flattening effect and it will be unpredictable because we don't have anything published as of now to know how much astigmatism that incision per se will cause. Actually, uh, we are having uh, Boramani, uh, we take the data from Dr. Boramani sir and made a nomogram. It was just for presentation that for uh, by incision, you can correct the uh, toricity of the cornea if you are not uh, having the, the patient can't afford for the toric lens. That is the only thing. Can you just explain the transportation of the image taken by the topographer to the OT? So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. It is Wi-Fi assisted. So when the uh, your uh, uh, optometrist examine the patient, 
you can access this from with the Wi-Fi in your. Uh, you you can access this on your PC or uh, whatever is tablet in your room, OPD room. So then you can see what are the uh, results, and you can also uh, analyze the results from there. So it is in the OT also. Sometimes what happened in the OT? You are operating. There is chemosis, conjunctal hemorrhage. The landmark point which you have marked are not visible. So you switch on the machine, you take the tablet in the OT, then whatever structure are visible in the eye, you can, uh, whatever is in the topographic picture, you can again click. So whatever structure is visible, you can re, uh, find out the, what is the position of these structures. So basically it is, uh, what I see from the whole thing is basically it is actually the same as the Osher's alignment that is there even on a night race. Yeah. You have to find out yeah. anatomical yeah. landmarks, but um, you know, they, we know that they are not very well defined Actually, when it comes to... We use this 12, uh, 12 me megapixel camera, now we shift it to 64 megapixel. So camera quality will go on increasing, so we'll get go very good picture in which we will able to see iris structures also. So that will, future is there. So, so what is the cost of this? Uh, uh, we were planning to uh, uh, use this, uh, uh, launch this, but we stopped because now we are working on the 64 megapixel camera. Second, we are also doing P2 in, by infrared, so total K will be there. You can get how much is the nearest estimate from the Barrett and how much is your total K. Third, and non-invasive tear film breakup time. So pres presently it is manual. It is providing you pictures every second. So you can see in which area the picture are blurred. So which spreads, the LED the light reflection is spread. So you can find out where the... No, sir, uh, I wanted to know what is the cost and you know so how much cost effective five, it would five, be. Five will be the cost with the, if you want for the P2 also, total TK and the uh, tear film, it will be more. So, yeah, five X. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you.